Okay, this video is going to cover the 10-1 part 3 warm-up and then the notes for 10-2, which is the start of ellipses. So let's pause the video and allow for time to complete the warm-up and then re return to the video in about five minutes. All right, let's go over it. So this says find the equation of a parabola with the given information, a focus of negative 3, 0, and a vertex of 0, 0. So if I graph the information that's given to me, the vertex is at 0, 0, and the focus is negative 3, 0. So this means my parabola points left, and from here I can determine that the P is 3. So if it points left, I know that it is a Y squared function, and if the P, if it, if it points left, it means that the uh, 4P is also going to be negative. So this would be a negative 3. So I would do y squared, because there's 0 for my vertex, equals 4 times negative 3 times x, because the x coordinate of my vertex is also 0. And I get y squared equals negative 12x. Okay, number 2 says find the equation of a parabola with the given information. This time the focus is 3, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and the directrix is y equals 2. So I know that my vertex is halfway between these two. The distance between one to the other is 4, which means my vertex is halfway between our two, and the p would be 2. And then I know that this opens down, so it's an x squared, and I know the p has to be negative. From here, I can get that my vertex is 3, 0. So if it's an x squared, then I'd get x minus h squared equals 4p y minus k. The h is 3, so I get x minus 3 squared equals 4 times the p, which is negative 2, and then y and the 0. So I get x minus 3 squared equals negative 8y. And there's the equation for my parabola. All right, next we're going to start the notes for chapter 10, section 2, which is ellipses. And then at the end of this video, I'll go over the homework from the 10, 1, part 3. So if we remember the image of the conics that we talked about at the beginning of the parabolas, so the parabolas were obviously in the purple. Now we're talking about ellipses. And ellipses are basically like ovals. So it's almost like a circle, except that it won't be the same distance in either direction. So by definition, an ellipse is the set of all the points in a plane, the sum of whose distances from two fixed points is constant. Each fixed point is called a focus, which is, and then the plural is a foci of the ellipse. The graphs of ellipse will look like this. So I'm going to zoom in on it so that you can see the first one. So in this case, we would say the it is wider than it is tall, which means that my major axis is the horizontal one. This is the equation of an ellipse. So it's an x squared and a y squared, just like a circle, equals 1. The difference is that these under here will have different values. So the a squared in this case is underneath the x, and the b squared is underneath the y. If I square root the a, I get the points that are the furthest points from my circle, or from my ellipse center along the horizontal axis, and if I square root the b, I get the distance from the center to the shorter side of the ellipse. Now, A is always the larger denominator. If A is under the X, which is the case here, then my ellipse is wider than it, my ellipse would be wider than it is tall, which is the minor, minor the major axis, sorry, would be the horizontal axis. If the A is underneath the Y, 
then it's taller than it is wide, and we would say the major axis here is the vertical one. So if the A is under, if the larger number is under the X, then it's wide. If the larger number is under the Y, then it's tall. And then the other point that within the ellipses that we'll have to find are the foci. And that's negative C0 and C0 if my center is at 0. And to find C, we would do A squared minus B squared. That gives me C squared, and then I would square root it to find the C. So the first thing we're going to look at is to make sure that the number by itself is 1. Then we'll identify our A squared. Then we'll identify our B squared. And then from there, the C squared. All right, let's walk through some examples. So this one just says graph the ellipse. The very first thing I want to do is make sure that this is 1, which it already is. And then the larger of the two numbers is a squared. So a squared is 9, and b squared is 4, which means a is 3, and b is 2. Now, because the a is under the x, I know that this is going to be wider than it is tall. I count out from my center, which is 0, 0 to the right 3 and to the left 3, which comes from here. And I count up 2 and down 2, which comes from here. And then I just connect my ellipse. Now the last thing I have to do is find the foci. So c squared equals a squared minus b squared, which means c squared equals 9 minus 4 c squared is 5, and c would be plus or minus the square root of 5. So I'd move to the right. The foci are always on the major axis, so I'd move to the right root 5 and to the left root 5 from my center. Now since root 5 is just a little bit bigger than root 4, I know that this was just a little bit bigger than 2. So this would be root 5, 0, and this would be negative root 5. 0. So those would be my foci. Okay, let's try another one. So I get 4x squared plus y squared equals 64. The first thing you should notice about this is this is not 1. So to make 64 1, I divide each part of my equation by 64. So this reduces to x squared over 16 plus y squared over 64 equals 1. This time my larger number is under the y. So a squared is 64, b squared is 16, and I know my major axis is the, um, the vertical axis. So I get A would be plus and minus 8, and B plus and minus 4. My center is still 0, 0, so I start at 0, 0, and I'm actually going to zoom in on this. Because I have to go up 8, I'm going to make these 2. So 2, 4, 6. 8, and the same here, 2, 4, 6, 8. Again, centers at 0, 0. This time my major axis is the y, so I'm going up 8 and down 8. And my minor axis is the x. I'm going right 4 and left 4. And then I make my ellipse. And now the foci is going to be on the y axis. So c squared equals a squared minus b squared. c squared equals 64 minus 16, which is 48. And c would equal plus and minus the square root of 48. So before I reduce that, I want to note that this is just under square root 49, which means it's probably like 6.8. So my foci is plus 6.8 and negative 
but when I write it in terms of a point, I would want to reduce this. So this becomes 16 and 3, or 4 root 3. Okay, if the center is not at 0, 0, you'll see it happen here. So this time you'll get an x minus h and a y minus k, and then everything else in the equation will look the same. But now I have to adjust the foci. So when I get the foci, if it's a horizontal axis, so if it's wider than it is tall, initially we would have added it to 0, 0. But if my vertex is shifted, let's say it's here, when I add my foci, I have to add and subtract it from my center which is hk. So let's say c is 2, and this point is 3, 0. Then I'm going to have to add 2, making it 5, 0, and subtract 2, making it 1, 0. If it's a vertical major axis, now it's taller than it is wide. Again, I would have started at 0 and added the C to get it, the foci on either side. Now we're saying that this is shifted. So let's say my center is here. Now when I get my C, so again let's say that C is 2, I have to add it to this point and subtract it from this point. So if my center here was, let's say this is 2, 2, the X doesn't change but the Y does. So this would be 2, 4, and this would be 2, 0. All right, so this example is that case. I have a center that's on at 0, 0. So I use my center, which is 2, negative 1. You always change the signs. The a squared is 16, which is under the y. So this is on the vertical axis a would be plus and minus 4, and then the b squared is 9, so b would be plus and minus 3. So because my center is 2, negative 1, it's here. The a is on the vertical, so I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2, 3, 4, and the B is on the horizontal. One, two, three, one, two, three. And there's my ellipse. Now to find the C squared, I do A squared minus B squared. So C squared equals 16 minus 9, and C squared equals 7, making C plus and minus the square root of 7. So from my initial center, I'm going to go along my major axis, which is the vertical axis, up root 7 and down root 7. And since root 7 is in between root 4 and root 9, I'm going to say this is like 2.6 maybe. So from here, I'm going to go up 2.6 and down 2.6. And those are my foci. Now to find those exact points, I take my center which was 2, negative 1. The x is the one that's going to stay the same. The y is what's going to move. So I'm going to take my center with the 2. From the negative 1, I'm going to add root 7. And then from the negative 1, I'm going to subtract root 7. And those would be the exact points of my foci. OK, example 4 graphing the ellipse. Again, this time my variable, or sorry, the number on the side is not 1, so I want to divide everything by 16. Divide this by 16. So I get x plus 3 squared over 4 times 16, which is going to be 64, plus y minus 3 squared over 16 equals 1. So from here, I can identify my center at negative 3, 3, 
the a squared is under the x, so I know the major axis is horizontal. If a squared is 64, a is plus and minus 8, and if b squared is 16, then b is plus and minus 4. So from negative 3, 3, and actually I'm going to go by 2 here, so negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 3, 3 would be here. There's my center. And then I'm going to go over 8 on the horizontal. So 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. And then 4 on the vertical. So 2, 4, 2, 4. And I've drawn my ellipse. And then the foci, which is going to be on the horizontal axis, I would get that c squared equals a squared minus b squared c squared equals 64 minus 16, which is 48. So c equals plus or minus the square root of 48. So before I reduce that again, I'm going to say that's a little less than 7. So from my center, I'm going to go 2, 4, 6, just under 7. 2, 4, 6, just under 7. And those are my foci. And then from my center, this time my x is the one that changes. The y is going to stay the same. So I would do negative 3. This becomes 4 root 3. So I'm going to do negative 3 plus 4 root 3, comma 3, and then negative 3 minus 4 root 3, comma 3. Okay, so that's the last example for ellipses or writing or graphing the ellipse. Here's the solutions from the homework for 1 point or 10.1 .1 part 3. Okay, any questions on these? Just make sure that you star, and then I'll be able to go over them on Thursday when I see you. Um, and then the assignment for 10.2 Part 1 is on Canvas, so you can use the rest of the class period to work on that. Make sure that you submit your notes from today.